I'm trying to bring that to the civilian world. It's, 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 it's unfortunate that even law enforcement military doesn't get the depth of information on that subject matter that they should, uh, but certainly civilians are almost never exposed to it. So uh, I, I want to bring What you're seeing in this video is the culmination of a free intermediate defensive handgun combatives class that I marketed through my YouTube channel and my Facebook page. I try to start these classes as best I can, focusing on human factors on use of force, something that people in the civilian sector rarely get a chance to delve into. Broad internal focus is what men do that drive our significance to others absolutely crazy. How many of you had this conversation before? You're sitting here like this, and you hear, hey babe, what are you thinking about? <laughs> and she's, she's expecting you to say, you know, how much I love you and what my life would be like without you. But what do you say? Nothing. <laughs> and she can't fathom it. Because women spend so few time, so little time in this box, okay? But you're telling the it's become painfully apparent to me over the years in teaching self-defense and firearms tactics that the average person is woefully unprepared as it pertains to quantitative data within human factors and use of force. They hear qualitative descriptors like don't get too close to a suspicious or aggressive person or stay within a certain amount of reach but never really articulating what that distance may be or saying things like, people can throw a punch faster than you think they can. All this qualitative information, without ever making it quantitative, without ever really putting a number to it. And even if you're not a math-minded person, it's amazing how powerful numbers can be when you apply them to practical information that they can see right in front of them. I'm gonna teach you an offensive knife fighting tactic to teach you a defensive principle. Uh, don't go to Walmart and kill somebody and tell them that I said you could do it in a class. I'm telling you that it's possible and I'm telling you that it's ethical or right. It's okay. Okay. I'll take it a step further and this is a bold statement. It's impossible to defend and it kills them 100% of the time. So I'm going to teach you how to kill a guy 100% of the time with a knife and it's impossible to defend and to prove it to you I'm going to do it right here. And even take it a step further, I'm going to take this big old knife that's easy to see because this is visual and I'm going to hide it way down here behind my leg. By the way, knives are meant to be felt, not seen. So in the real world, I would never tell the guy I'm about to do this, right? So he's even at a better advantage here than he would be normal. Because he's already loosened it up. So. <laughs> I'm going to take this knife, and I'm going to swipe it across your throat. I'm going to cut your carotid artery, um, your jugular, and I'm going to break your windpipe. You can do that in the ER, they can't survive. There's no, there's no trauma response to that, even in an ER, but they can do fast enough that he's going to that. You're, for all intents and purposes, you're decapitating. And the only thing I'm not severing is the spinal column, which is irrelevant because of all the blood loss he's going to lose from his brain and not be able to the hell. What are they going to sew up first? The jugular, the carotid artery, the wind pipe? they got to pick one of them and the other ones are killing you in the process. Okay? Now, this would be very easy, theoretically, to defend. If he does this, I can't get there. He's got leverage. I'm swinging on the outside. I can't get there. So I'm telling him what I'm going to do is something that's easy to see, and he knows exactly how to walk. So when I go, when you visually see me go to slice your throat, just don't let me do it. <laughs> that was pretty quick. <laughs> 0.18 versus a quarter plus his movement time. Now he could go here in the same 0.18, but he's still a quarter second behind the game. Now he knows exactly what it's like. You ready? <laughs> You're dead. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's the same reason this works. So a bad guy, put the gun to my head, oh, and pull the trigger. See the light? So you know you shot me. So when I move, pull the trigger. Am I shot? No. Okay. <laughs> I gotta be honest, that never really gets old. Um, obviously we can't stay in the classroom all day. Eventually we get to the range, that's what they're here to do is shoot. And we typically start off with some pretty basic drills. What I like to do in my level two classes, which is, you know, like this class is really intended to take somebody from 
a range mentality and make them harder to kill, to make them more defensive minded so they stop shooting and start practicing. And there's a big difference between the two. So I start the class after we do a safety brief and talk about human factors and use of force with a baseline group. So they go out to seven yards, they shoot a five round group at their own pace. Uh, and that allows them to sort of set a standard for what they can do cold first five shots on the range. And it lets me see their stance, their grip, and the draw. So when we move into drills like you're seeing now on the screen, I've already had a chance to try to start chipping away at the mistakes they're making, improving their techniques. And you'll still see things uh, that these guys are doing that are not quite as polished, at least a few of them, a couple of them, they're not quite as polished as they will leave the class being. But it really gives me a chance to establish a baseline of accuracy and individually start working my way up and down the line, chipping away at some of the things that we can do to make more efficient motions, economy of motion, that kind of thing, make sure that our technique's good to go. And after they collectively go through those processes individually, I, I, I add time to it, put them on the shot clock, which the, anyone who's ever shot on the shot clock knows that adds stress as well. So here they are on the shot clock, now establishing, just like they did with accuracy on the baseline grouping drill, they're now establishing a baseline in terms of speed. If they are just trying to get the motion correct as they understand it at this point early in the class, what is that time gonna be for a single round on target? And eventually we transition to multiple rounds on target and that kind of thing. Once again, establishing baselines, working my way up and down the firing line, helping people improve. And sometimes I'll stop at a guy and we'll do this five, six, seven times. Sometimes they get one or two reps and I move on because I know they've got it. In this particular class, there was a wide gambit of uh, experience. We had a police dispatcher. We had a, a law enforcement officer with 13 years in the service. Uh, we've got a guy who's you know, really competent and capable with firearms on the range mentality, but has never really taken formal training. And then we've got a new guy that's fairly new to firearms with no formal training. Uh, and only a few trips to the range, but very passionate about the subject matter. And you'll kind of see the skill breakdown and, and, and probably could guess who's who in some of these initial drills uh, as we go through and play them out. Um, so I think it's critical and these really intermediate, and when I'm saying intermediate, that's the, that's the breakdown from range to street, from, from going and shooting to be, becoming someone who's well-practiced and and doing it in such a way that's applicable to the real world. That you get reps and you fight through mistakes so that you don't train yourself to vapor lock if you do mess something up. It's amazing how nerve wracking it can be to be the only guy on the firing line with a shot clock and a group of your peers watching you shoot. In this case, the guy you're seeing shoot right now, he's the least experienced guy on the range and so that's adding a lot of pressure. We also like to have a good time on the range too, as you'll see uh, one of my long-term subscribers doing the robot walk back and forth uh, as we get ready to run and do some drills. It's really easy to be on this side of the screen and be critical of some of these initial drills, but these guys are under the clock, they're in front of their peers, they're doing something for a few of them that is quite new and different in terms of the training methodology. And it can be, it can be nerve wracking. And this is the time to mess up because you're nervous. A guy like this, who's well polished, former law enforcement, or actually current law enforcement, he's going to run through these drills pretty easily. But even you can see there, he on the first malfunction, he racked and banged, but he didn't tap at the beginning. Now, there's an argument to be made that maybe the tap is not all that uh, useful. Eventually, we got into more dynamic stuff. We start shooting around cover and concealment, uh, and I'm also making these guys work their way down cover and concealment, uh, moving from cover to cover, or from concealment to concealment and then transition to their offhand and work back to the left. These were all right-handed shooters. And you can see some of these guys have never put a gun in their left hand, never even considered it, never even shot behind cover and concealment or understand the methodology of it. So these are the real world factors that you don't necessarily get on a static pistol range, but a competent instructor can put you through the paces uh, and get you in a position that in the real world when the rounds fall down range or fly down range, what's the first thing most people are gonna do if, if they uh, don't absolutely have to immediately return fire and there's nowhere to go. I mean, I guess if you're in an open field or an open parking lot and there's no cars anywhere or barricades, 
you're just kind of alone and unafraid and you got to do what you got to do but most people instinctively are going to dive behind cover and concealment or run to cover and concealment and set themselves up even in a, a home defense scenario studies show that most people when they hear that door kick in they don't run to the door with a gun they they run behind something and and sort of an ambush mentality and even if you're ambushing out from behind cover and concealment, understanding how to pop, how not to telegraph yourself coming behind the line of the target or in the line of sight of your target is absolutely critical. Uh, so that's really what we're working through on these drills on the range is getting people used to moving laterally from cover to cover instead of crowding the cover and doing what I call Hollywood cover and they run towards it like a teddy bear and they're uh, cuddling up against it, but to keep effective distance from your cover, still close enough to use it for cover and concealment for yourself and not your adversary, but also not crowding it. Make sure you're popping around, you're rolling out at the hips, getting your feet positioned right, uh, not shooting the barricade. We had quite a few people that their first time through uh, shot the cover and concealment, which, you know, if that's sheetrock, that's not that big of a deal. Um, if it's a stainless steel door jam, all of a sudden, you're not getting penetration out of a pistol and you're uh, letting your adversary know that you're engaged in the fight where you're engaging from and you're not throwing effective rounds down range so teaching them to not keep the gun perpendicular to the ground but keep it perpendicular with their shoulders is really important at the end of the day at the class really what i wanted to do is sit down with everybody get their feedback they all had various experiences coming into this and all offered really good feedback for how I might take what they experienced and, and, and adjust it for future classes and really put together the best intermediate pistol class we can that only takes you know six hours to do which is really the mission of the day. If you like what you see here please subscribe, like the video, comment, let me know what you think get in touch with me on Facebook and if you ever want to train with Warrior Works, find me on Facebook or leave a comment and I'll get some information to you. We'd love to see you here in class and take you from the range and make you harder to kill. Thanks guys.